Hi. Now, here's another example on simple harmonic motion where we've got a light elastic string of natural length 0.5 meters, a modulus of elasticity 147 newtons, which hangs vertically with this upper end fixed and a mass of 1.5 kilograms attached at the lower end. The system rests in equilibrium and then the mass is projected downwards at a speed of 1.4 meters per second. Show that the motion is simple harmonic and find the amplitude. Now for questions like this, I would always draw a diagram. In fact, it's going to be two diagrams. The first diagram will be where we've got the elastic. Let's just say it's hanging from here, hanging vertically down. And at the end here, we've got the mass. So I just put that in like so. And I'd mark in the natural length. This is not drawn to scale, but I've just put a dash there and that would be 0.5 meters. Okay, the natural length from there to there. So it's hanging in equilibrium. So it's going to be an extension at this point. I'm going to call it x0. There'll also be forces acting on this particle when it's in equilibrium. There'll be its weight acting downwards, which will be 1.5 g newtons. And there'll be a tension acting upwards. And I'm going to call that tension T0, and that'll be T0 newtons. Now this is projected downwards with a speed of 1.4 meters per second. So I'll just put that in as 1.4 meters per second. And that means that this particle is now going to oscillate about this line here, if it performs simple harmonic motion, that is. And we've yet to prove that. So what I want to do next is draw another elastic string which is extended further. The particle is going to drop a distance and then it's going to come to instantaneous rest and then come shooting back. And I'm going to just put that particle when it comes to instantaneous rest, say in that position. But what I'm going to do is catch the particle when it's dropped a further distance from this equilibrium position and I'm going to call that distance x okay from there so we've got this center point here which will be the center of oscillation it's the equilibrium position at the moment and that x is the distance that it stretches further from that equilibrium position in its general motion that is and so if I put on the forces acting on the mass at this stage, we've got its weight acting downwards, 1.5 G Newtons. We've got a tension acting upwards, which I'm now going to call in general just T Newtons. And this distance from the equilibrium position to where it comes to instantaneous rest, I'm going to mark in as A. Okay, so that would be A. And at this point, let's just mark in that it comes to instantaneous rest by just putting a zero there, zero meters per second. I'll also mark in that dash there so that we've got the natural length of 0.5 meters. So this is the typical kind of diagram I would draw for something like this. And what I'm going to say is that this first diagram, we'll just call figure one, because we're going to reference this at times. And this diagram here, I'm just going to call figure two. So I hope you can see that. It's a bit cramped, but I've got a lot to put on here. Now, in order to show that the motion is simple harmonic, what I'm going to need to turn to is this figure two. And resolving the direction of x increasing. In other words, look at the force acting on this particle and that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. But that's going to involve knowing this distance here. In other words, x0. So first of all, in order to get that 
distance, I'm going to need to consider this diagram, figure one, and look at using Hooke's Law. So let's just write a little intro up here. So it's figure one, and so using Hooke's Law, just write that in there so that the reader can hopefully understand what we're actually using. By Hooke's Law, that is that the tension in general is equal to the modulus of elasticity lambda times the extension all divided by the natural length L. So that means that the tension here must be equal to mg. It's in equilibrium. Okay. I'm just going to use algebraic letters instead of writing the numerical value for the mass in. So therefore we've got mg must equal the modulus of elasticity lambda times the extension which is now x0 over the natural length L. And I'm going to call this equation 1. Now we turn to the second diagram, figure 2. And in this diagram I'm going to resolve downwards. In other words, apply equation of motion downwards, force equals mass times acceleration. So what we've got now is mg, okay, so we've therefore got mg minus the tension t is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So you've got m times x double dot. Remember, always resolve in the direction of x increasing. And I'm going to call that equation 2. Now again, if I use Hooke's Law in this diagram here, let's just put by Hooke's Law. Okay, what have we got? Well, we know that the tension, which is T, must be equal to the modulus of elasticity lambda divided by the natural length times the extension. Now the extension is x plus xo. Okay, so we'll just put that in there as x plus xo. And I'll call this equation 3. Now if I border this off, then what I'm going to do next is substitute equation 3 into equation 2. So sub 3 in equation 2. And what does that give us? Well we've got mg minus t, but t is now lambda over L from 3, lambda over L multiplied with x plus xo, and this is equal to the mass times the acceleration, m times x double dot. And if I expand this out, okay, let's just see what we get. We've got mg minus lambda x over the natural length L minus lambda x0 over the natural length L. And that equals m x double dot. Now from 1, I can see that lambda xo over L is mg. So if I substitute that in, I'm going to get mg minus lambda x over L minus mg. And that's going to equal mx double dot. Just put a note in here that this substitution then was from 1. So the mg's cancel, and if I divide through by m, I therefore have that x double dot is equal to minus lambda x divided by the mass m times the natural length L. And this particular form is exactly the same as x double dot equals minus omega squared x, which is the form for simple harmonic motion. And we have the constant, omega squared, is lambda divided by the mass times the natural length, ml. So omega will be the square root of 
lambda over ml. So I've been able to justify that this is going to follow simple harmonic motion. Now next we've got to find out what the amplitude was. In other words, A, where it comes to instantaneous rest. And to do this, we call upon the formula now that V squared equals omega squared A squared minus X squared, which is basic formula you should already be aware of when it comes to simple harmonic motion. Now, we know that when X here equals zero, the particles in this position and so V will be 1.4. So let's just put here that when X equals 0 it follows that V will be equal to Omega times the amplitude A. And if I rearrange this for A we've therefore got that A the amplitude will equal V divided by Omega. So this is going to equal V and Omega then is the root of lambda over ML. So just got to reciprocate that. So you're going to get the square root then of ML over lambda. And so it's just a question of putting our values in here. We therefore have that the amplitude A is equal to V which is 1.4 and then we've got the square root of the mass, which is 1.5 kilograms. So we've got 1.5. Natural length is 0.5 meters. And the modulus of elasticity is 147 newtons. And if you work that out, it comes out to exactly 0.1 meters. So I hope that's given you some idea about the methods that you can use when you're dealing with problems like this. Okay?